This right here is graphene, that magical material with all those amazing properties. But unlike all those technologies that are just five years away, this is being commercialized in products as we speak. I am here with Skeleton Technologies in Tallinn, Estonia. One of the forefront leaders in manufacturing supercapacitors. Skeleton supercapacitors power everything from emergency brakes on trains to grid stabilization efforts and even push to pass in Indy cars. All those same applications require huge amounts of power in a very small period of time. And that is where supercapacitors shine. Oh, and by the way, they're using graphene, which goes a long way in making an ultimate supercapacitor. So how exactly does it work? And what all does it power? Let's figure this out together. I'm Ricky, and this is Tuba Da Vinci. This video is brought to you by Delete Me. This is our test house here in Tallinn. Some of the tests that are going on right now are um, some development with our new battery technology that we're working on. We have ongoing environmental testing pretty much all the time. So right now we're doing corrosion testing of PCBs and components. You can actually come have a look. So one of the things that uh, is really prevalent in the battery industry is state of health and state of charge of the battery itself. And this is not something that uh, has historically been a big part of supercapacitor development, but it's something that we are starting to develop now, not only for our battery technology, but also for our supercapacitor technology. So what are you testing? I see a little bit of moisture. This, this chamber specifically is just for um, humidity and temperature control. So right now we're running it at 95 degrees Celsius, 93% humidity. Oh, wow. So essentially kind of some of the highest uh, conditions that you would have as far as humidity um, without submerging it. And so the idea here is to expose it to this for a lifetime test around 1,500 hours. This is an oven that we have a module inside of doing what we call fast aging. The lifetime of the module itself is around 10 years. Obviously we don't, we want to have results for the module sooner than 10 yeah. years. So we try to expedite that as much as possible. So we essentially uh, put the, the, the module or, or the component or whatever it is in a high heat environment to simulate fast aging of the component. And so we can get those results a lot quicker. How hot is high temp? So for supercapacitor technology right now, our um, typical operating uh, limits are around 50 degrees C. So we usually have the oven set somewhere right below 50 degrees C because there will be some heat generation from the, the supercapacitor cycling itself. Supercapacitors like batteries store energy. If you're old enough, you might remember those old one-time use flash bulbs on cameras that exploded, creating a brief moment of intense light. Today, we have reusable flash photography thanks to capacitors, a super high power density device that charges from a battery over time and then once ready, can discharge all that energy in an instant. So here we have uh, one of our latest developments, which is an automotive application. The first is an engine start module. Um, so essentially the module is used for cranking of a truck. It's very important for large load trucks, heavy diesels, logistics trucks, and stuff like that, especially when they operate in really cold temperatures. Uh, for instance, really far up north in the logging trucks or here in Europe, you have Finland, Norway, all of these countries that run trucks really far north. And so they get exposed to really cold temperatures. They would actually leave the truck idling over the whole weekend just so that the engine would not cool down and the oil would get so cold that come Monday morning, the old lead acid batteries just did not have enough cranking power. A typical truck in North America has 16 lead acid batteries in it. With a single cell start, we're able to eliminate half of those batteries. So we can take eight of those lead acid batteries out of the truck, replace it with a single scale start module, and it has enough cranking power to actually uh, crank that truck up all the way down to minus 40 degrees Celsius. A lot of the topics we cover are counterintuitive or not immediately obvious. You know what's really not obvious? How exposed your personal information is online. It's why I've been a member of our sponsor, Delete Me, for two years now. Delete Me is a hands-free subscription service that'll remove all your personal information that's being sold online. And it's not just a one-time scan. Just look at all these listings that have been reviewed each quarter and how the amount of exposed data is going down over time. I just got my eighth quarterly report and Delete Me has scanned over 2,300 listings. And it's just amazing to see how the amount of data being exposed just keeps going down over time. And remember, Delete Me isn't just for you. There's family plans so you can protect your entire family and keep all of their data safe because we all have a lot on our minds and your privacy probably doesn't come up very often. It's why I let Delete Me stay vigilant and do all the work so I don't have to think about it. Have you ever heard the expression, if something is free, you're the product being sold? 
So join Delete Me and save 20% on all plans with my code Ricky. Links in the description. Huge thanks to Delete Me and you. Now back to the show. So this is another environmental chamber that we have. This one's actually liquid to liquid cooling. So we can go down to actually minus 70 degrees. But in addition to that, it's also a destructive chamber. So this chamber is actually rated for explosion. So what you have here is the scale start, which is the engine start module. And then you have a small bank of lithium ion batteries. Earlier you mentioned that the idea was you could get rid of half of the 16. Yeah, all 16 would go. Really? Yes. So this is a battery then? So yeah, so this would replace all the batteries inside the truck. So this would be the engine start module itself. This would be what would be used for cranking and the lithium ion side of it would be used for all the hotel loads in the truck. Let's say uh, the guy falls asleep or whatever, leaves the radio on, leaves the TV on, whatever the case is, and the, the lithium ion battery basically drains itself all the way down. The electronics inside of the engine start module are actually smart enough that it'll disconnect itself from the battery. It won't allow the capacitor bank to discharge. And then no matter what, the driver still has ability to crank the truck and then recharge the lithium ion battery the next day. Another great use case for capacitors is racing. Yeah, think about this. An Indy car with driver weighs around 800 kilograms, around 1,760 pounds. Going from straights to turns, these cars have to decelerate from 360 kilometers an hour to around 100, which requires around 2.1 megajoules of braking energy. That means it has to handle braking regeneration of over one megawatt. The fastest charging EVs can only charge around 350 kilowatts, about a third of of what we'd need. But skeleton supercapacitors can fully charge and discharge in approximately four and a half seconds, providing drivers an additional 60 horsepower to get back up to speed when exiting that corner. And it can charge and discharge a million times, and it weighs under 50 kilograms. At a maximum power density of around 300 watts per kilogram, a lithium ion battery that could handle the same amount of power would weigh around 1600 kilograms, doubling the weight of the car. So ultimately then, the key to a incredible ultra capacitor is surface area. If you have thinner and thinner and thinner areas down to one atom thick, in the case of graphene, you can hold more energy and get closer to the energy storage potential of a battery. Not quite, but close. And this is how they do it. In my hand right now, I'm holding graphene. This is actually what it looks like. Now, this has been sitting around and the moisture is kind of clumped up. Normally it's much finer. And this is what makes up their latest generation of cells, like this one here. This is made with a curved graphene. In keeping with the parallels to batteries, this is a look at skeleton supercapacitors, but in different pack and module levels. This particular one here is rail certified. This is used by Skoda trains and other trains for emergency braking. And inside of here, there's 18 of their cells, a total module voltage of around 51 volts. And this entire cabinet is 900 volt all in series. But in this particular case for emergency brakes on a train, each car would have some of these set up. And if ever there was an emergency and they pull the emergency brake, these would discharge instantly and clamp down the wheels and bring the train to a stop. When you talk about traditional power plants and stuff like that, there's usually a lot of kinetic energy behind the flywheels of the turbines and everything that they can actually absorb that. And so they can maintain grid frequency and grid voltage through those interruptions uh, with minimal disturbances. But now you have the big shift to renewable energy. So you have a lot of solar and a lot of wind supporting the grid. And so I like to think of it as, you know, when you go to start that pump and that pump drags down the voltage, drags down the, the frequency on the grid, the wind isn't gonna blow any harder and make that, that turbine spin any faster. The sun's not gonna shine any brighter and, and produce more energy out of the solar panels. The water in the dam's not gonna flow any faster, although they do have some manipulation they can do, but usually it's so quick that, you know, they can't respond. And so what they're coming, uh, what they're facing is some grid instability, right? Because they can't make up for it. And so the real use case for the uh, super capacitor in this case is developing a new technology, a new industry called e-stack comms. A really good example is in uh, the USA, up in the northern states, Vermont, Maine, they import a lot of energy from Canada. And so you got to think all those big electrical lines are running across the mountains and everything. And, you know, for hundreds of miles before they hit the next station. And so every so often uh, you would put a stack comp station along the grid for power factor correction and minimize that impact that it has on the grid. So essentially what we're doing here is we are scaling down the e-stack comm idea. 
to a small version that we can validate the technology, validate how our energy storage modules and systems that we're building and developing uh, work with the overall system. So what you see here is basically a two inverter setup with some controls, some protections, uh, different electric devices just for simulating a, a much larger installation, you know, a whole building. And what would be on the other side of this would be our energy storage system. This is the genius of supercapacitors, but historically, they do have a problem, and that's where the graphene comes in. Skeleton supercapacitors store energy electrostatically by accumulating ions at the interface between electrodes like this. This differs from batteries, which store energy chemically. So to create a capacitor, all you need is something like this aluminum foil, a separator like the sheet of paper, and then rolled up and submersed and electrolyzed, like that. But only the surface area of this aluminum foil has potential to accumulate ions. So you want the electrodes to be as thin as possible. And while this aluminum foil seems thin, on the atomic scale, it's about 200,000 atoms thick. And that's where the graphene comes in. Graphene is a flat layer of carbon atoms, which means you could make about 200,000 sheets of graphene from this one piece of aluminum foil. Curved graphene, the active material in skeleton supercapacitors, resembles a crumpled sheet of paper like this, with more surface area and edges, allowing for increased energy storage. This one atom thick nature of graphene is what makes it so interesting from an engineering perspective, and the supercapacitor might be one of the perfect use cases for it. So supercapacitors reign supreme for power density, the ability to shove a lot of energy in and get it back out super quickly. But when it comes to energy density, that's why we still need batteries. The perfect analogy for this is like a swimming pool. The larger the pool, the more water it can hold. Well, that's energy density. But the size of the pipe that you can fill and discharge the pool, that's the power density. Lithium ion batteries have energy densities ranging from 200 to 400 watt hours per kilogram and power densities ranging from 250 to 430 watts per kilogram. Now, traditional capacitors have always suffered greatly in terms of energy density, only coming in around 0.1 watt hours per kilogram. But thanks to the curved graphene in skeleton supercapacitors, they've achieved energy densities around 7 to 11 watt hours per kilogram, roughly a hundred times better than traditional supercapacitors. But they have power densities as high as 28,000 watt hours per kilogram, or 28 kilowatts per kilogram, 93 times better than lithium ion batteries. And while lithium ion batteries have a cycle life of between 2,000 to 4,000 cycles before degrading to about 80% of its original capacity, supercapacitors can withstand a million cycles and are much less sensitive to conditions like temperature. And again, unlike other future technology that's seemingly always five years away, Skeleton is shipping these curved graphene supercapacitors today. So the super caps themselves are kind of based around industry norms uh, for sizing. So we have a couple of different sizes that are pretty common for our manufacturing. So the smallest one would be this uh, D33 size cell. It's essentially the diameter of the cell itself. And then this is our most common size, uh, which is a D60 cell, 60 diameter. It's I describe it as roughly the size of a Red Bull can. Yeah. <laughs> so essentially it's just an aluminum can. The entire can itself makes up the negative electrode of the cell. And then uh, the inside of the cell itself is what we call the jelly roll, which make up the two positive and negative electrodes. So this is our current um, industrial module that is our kind of our best selling module to date. Uh, we're in the development of our latest revision, which is the Skelgrid 2.0 module. This is what we would refer to as Skelgrid 1.0 or 102 volt module. So what you have here is 36 cells, 36 D60 cells in series. And then um, each one of those D60 cells is rated to 2.85 volts. So then if you add it all up, you get roughly 102 volts. And so the idea here is that essentially it's kind of like stacking Legos, depending on what the voltage of the customer system is, then you put that many modules in series to build the voltage up. So behind you here, you have the Marlin rack, which was 
initially assembled as the charger. Um, it's not connected to it anymore because of the grant projects over and everything. But at that time we had a big pendulum that came over the top with a big pentagraph charger that would come down and attach to the, or uh, make contact with the top of the car. And so what we were able to do is we were able to fully charge the vehicle in approximately 30 seconds. And the vehicle was able to travel anywhere from eight to 10 kilometers, depending on the speed from that single charge. Now that 30 seconds, actually only 10 seconds of that was charging. The other 20 seconds was 10 seconds of it lowering and making contact with the vehicle and the other 10 seconds with it raising up. So I was pretty blown away at just how many different use cases that they're actually already in. This PCB setup is actually for the healthcare industry. And what they use this for is to power MRIs and x-ray machines, things that use a huge amount of energy for a quick moment. If you ever noticed, those kinds of machines can have entire neighborhoods of light that flicker. But by having supercapacitors, they can get better imaging, better results. Ultimately, if there is a high power application that you need, supercaps, especially with higher energy densities on board, like the ones from Skeleton, could be a complete game changer. And there's probably gonna be even more applications we haven't even thought of yet. What makes this special though, is how much energy density it has. Typically, capacitors carry very little energy. Yes, they can charge and discharge very quickly, but they don't hold much energy, not compared to a lithium ion battery. This is graphene, I'm holding it. One of the funny jokes that I heard earlier from one of the engineers is that graphene can do everything except get out of the lab. But that's not true, here we are. Skeleton is actually producing more graphene than in the history of all the academic production and testing and labs ever until now. And they're gonna to continue to wrap that up. They have new factory plans to keep increasing the supply. So this, it doesn't actually look that different. You'd have to get the microscope out, but I am holding graphene. And this is really why I wanted to come out here. I made my first video about skeleton capacitors two years ago. And since that time, they have commercialized and been in all kinds of products like we've talked about but this is at the core of what makes it so special. And this is for all the viewers and all the comments that always say that that'll never happen or just in the lab. Here's why we should keep investing because eventually some of these technologies find a way to get commercialized and become a part of our everyday lives. And graphene, we're just getting started. I wonder if this will wash off my hands. <laughs> we'll find out.